Hi everyone, we are the group 6 and I am Samantha Nicole Teterson, one of the reporter. And before we begin with our topic for today, we must start with a game. So this game is called Fix One Word. And I know you guys, or some of you guys, is familiar with this. So the given pictures is all connected with our topic for today. So we get, without further ado, let's get started. So can you guess what the picture is telling us about? It's so neat and clean. And there's a hint. Yes, you got it right. That is organizing. Here's the next picture. Can you guess what it is? You're correct. It is delivering. The next picture is this. Can you get what it is? You're correct. It is persuasive speech. Our topic for today is all about organizing and delivering a persuasive speech. So by the end of the lesson, we must have been able to identify the feature of a persuasive speech, write topics appropriate for a persuasive speech, develop and deliver a persuasive speech, Evaluate and critic a persuasive speech. Practice learning and thinking skills, life skills, and ICT literacy. And lastly, we must have been able to reflect on our learning and organizing and delivering a persuasive speech. Qualities of an effective speech. So maybe you're, question, you're questioning right now, why is it important we should know the different qualities of making an effective speech? So the answer to that is we need to know the different qualities so that we need we can apply those qualities when it's our turn to write or make a speech. Because making a speech is different from making an effective speech because the effect the efficacy is there and we should always emphasize that our speeches can have an impact, a positive impact to the audiences and in order to make that positive impact, in order to have that type of impact in our speech, yes, we need to learn, we need to understand, and we need to know the different qualities in order to make an effective speech. So here are the qualities. So beside each quality, as you can see, there are guide questions in order to accomplish those. So first, we have the well-defined goal. So it's important that we should have a defined goal in mind because it is the way um, having a goal is is a guide it's already a guide on how you can write on how you can manage and, and on how you can bring break down the points of your speech and one question there is what is your specific goal in mind so those are the questions in order to answer and in order to find out your defined goal next the second um, the second quality is a clear main point so it is important that your main point must be clear because the main point is the reason why or is the message you're conveying to the audience to the listeners and that should be clear because if it isn't clear it confuses usually it confuses the audiences and you should um, you should also not just question the others like is this message clear for you guys you should also question yourself like is the message I'm delivering clear to me because how are you going to defend or how are you going to present your argument when the main point you are defending or the main point you are presenting isn't clear to you and the third quality we have the sufficient supporting ideas so why is it important that we should have supporting ideas I mean not just supporting ideas but sufficient supporting ideas so it is important because having sufficient number of supporting ideas usually answers all of the questions of the audience so basically if the audiences have a question they and the way you are spitting supporting ideas they can it, it immediately answers their questions so like do you have factual statements and reliable sources to support your main point that's the one of the guide questions there next fourth is logical reasoning so how will you state your arguments 
and there are many ways in stating those. We'll use any of the following, deductive, inductive, casual, analogy, and it is important to have this because having a specific way of stating your argument is making the um, speech cleaner and it's more precise. Yes. The fifth, um, the fifth quality is the effective and powerful ways to gain attention of your audience. So you need to make sure that your audience, or audiences, are listening to you, and you should make use of powerful ways and effective ways that you should gain their attention because what's the point of you doing your speech if they're not listening so you need to brainstorm ideas on how you should gain their attention and how they should focus to you um, during the time that you are delivering your speech next compelling ideas to make your target audience feel and think make sure that the way you de deliver your speech you should always have this certain impact to them that will make them realize oh oh this guy is making making sense this guy isn't making sense why does he not make sense why does he make sense why why do i think that they're right why do i think that they're wrong that's that should be the mindset of the audiences whenever they are listening to your speech because in that way, you can literally say that they're listening, that you have their attention, and that they are um, thinking, and that they are um, understanding and comprehending your speech. And lastly, salient motives to target the salient needs to your audience. So you should have um, sneaky but effective ways uh, in order to target the needs of your audiences so make sure that your speech has the seven seven um qualities in order to know that the this speech you're delivering or this speech that you're making is effective so let's proceed to the types of speech the first type of speech is the speech that questions facts and this type questions the existence of a particular event or happening. So basically, in this type, this speech usually focuses on the questioning of something that literally exists. Basically, they're like, why did this happen? Why does this exist? And I have an argument. Uh, I have an argument. I have a reason. I have a speech for that. So that's usually what this type is about. The second type is the speech that questions value. This type focuses on questions of value regarding topics on the self, family, friendship, religions, government, freedom, love, and money, among others. And this type is more of the, this type of speech is more of a speech that um, usually presents um, based on the connection to the self, family, friendship, and usually it revolves around the human beings or the people around you. And it revolves to the environment you're in. It revolves around the environment you're in. Next type of speech is a speech that questions policy. So this type of speech questions the current state of things which can impact the future. So, this type of speech usually questions um, if this happened, uh, it usually say, states like, if this happened today, today, it can affect the future. It, if, you, if you are going to conduct this experiment, then it can, something might happen in the future like this, like that. And this is, here's a speech on why I don't want you to continue. So that's the type, those are the type of, that's basically, or that's how, or that's what usually is, um, that's what usually is presented in this type of speech. And lastly, the last type of speech is a speech that refutes. This type either responds or di disproves the claims of others while defending and promoting one's own claims. And the example for this one is a debate. And this type of speech um, basically 
you make this speech or you present this speech you either agree on one's claim or you disagree and you promote your own and that's why debate is an example of a speech that refutes so those four are the types of speech first speech that questions facts second speech that questions value third speech that questions policy and lastly speech that refutes thank you so organizational pattern so what is organizational pattern so it is patterns of organization show the relationship between supporting details in paragraphs essays and chapters the, organiza the organization of the supporting details helps you understand how an author thinks and helps you remember what you read so the following are some of the suggested that you can use when you organize persuasive speech a f o r e s t so it consists of anecdotes facts and figures opinion rhetorical questions emotive language superlatives and tripling so anec anecdotes so it begins your speech with a personal story observation or experience facts and figures pro it provides striking with statistics that can support your ideas for opinion you can begin your statement with i believe that i know that i can and others for rhetorical questions you can add engaging rhetorical questions for emotive language you should let it appeal to your audience's emotions superlatives use superlatives to exaggerate an idea for tripling writing principle simply entails using three words together to reinforce your point an example is about julius caesar's statement veni vidi vc when it translates to English, I came as I saw, I conquered. So this is the format below. I will talk about only the left side because the right side will only be a waste of time. But you can get a hard copy of our PowerPoint in the description box. So the format is, it consists of anecdote, facts and figures, opinion, rhetorical question, emotive language, superlatives, and tripling for problem solution first is you need to identify the problem and second provide a solution which will show the practicality of your proposal its purpose is to persuade your listeners that the lgbtq community should be protected from discrimination its main point its main point is the lgbtq community deserves to be protected by the state against exclusivity in any workplace or office its supporting idea is there have been horrible reports and cases of discrimination against members of the LGBTQ community at work in terms of promotion and benefits. Hence, there is a need to create and implement a policy related to this. So this is the format. Problem, Solution, Support 1, and Support 2. For Problem, Cause, Solution, First is you need to identify the problem, second is analyze the root cause of the problem, third is provide a solution to the problem. Its purpose is to persuade your listeners why the state or government needs to be converged with the private sector in maintaining and protecting national heritage sites. Its main point is preserving our national heritage sites such as century-old churches, theaters, and other artifacts is the least priority of the government. So they should be tie up the private establishments to maintain these historical places. Yet supporting idea, one can observe that these sites are losing their historical and cultural value. So the format option is this one. So problem on the left side it has problem, root cause, support one, solution, and so support one. For comparative advantages. You need to identify the problem. Second is present at least two solutions to the problem. Third is compare the two in terms of practicality and feasibility. So its purpose is to persuade your listeners why there is a need for a political reform. Its main point is politics in the Philippines is very dirty. Supporting idea, there have been a lot of anomalies and illegal transactions going on in the political system. So this is the format below about comparative advantages. So it so on the left side it has problem, 
solution 1, support 1, support 2, and solution 2. It has support 1 again, and support 2. And for comparison, support 1 and support 2. So, for Monroe's motivated sequence, so, Alan Monroe. Who is Alan Monroe? He is a professor from Purdue University. He created an outline for making speeches based on the psychology of persuasion. This outline is known as Monroe's motivated sequence. So, here's how to apply this technique. First is you need to grab the attention of the audience by identifying the challenge you plan to confront or the problem you plan to address. Second, establish the need or urgency to address the identified challenge or problem. Third is you present possible solutions to your audience to satisfy the need. Fourth is help your audience visualize. And the last one is engage your audience to participate in promoting change through a call for action. So its purpose is to persuade your audience to abstain from consuming alcohol. Its main point is abstaining from alcohol will help students live a healthy and safe life which will benefit themselves and those around them while avoiding any criminal actions. So this is the format of Monroe's motivated sequence. So it has attention grabber, it has need, satisfaction, visualization, and call to action. For methods of persuasion, so Consider what Stephen Lucas, author of The Art of Public Speaking, writes about how the audience can be persuaded by a speaker. So, they perceive that the speaker has credibility, they are convinced by the evidence presented, they are convinced by the speaker's reasoning, and lastly is their emotions are touched by the speaker's ideas or, la or use of language. So... How to enhance your credibility explain how you become an, er an expert on the topic so you can do this by sharing how well you read investigated or research the topic second is connect your experience beliefs values or attitudes with your audiences so you can do this by telling your audience that you have the same experience beliefs values or attitudes so practice more often Practice more often so you can deliver your speech with conviction. You can do this by exposing yourself more often to speaking situations such as reciting and reading announcements in class. So for the next one is how to use evidence. So first is to specify evidence. So you can do this by telling your audience that a specific number, example, or document. Second is avoid outdated evidence so you can do this by reading and digging new evidence to keep yourself updated on the significant facts and figures and for the third is choose reputable or credible sources for your evidence so you can do this by carefully identifying and evaluating your sources so how to use reasoning is you need to avoid logical fallacies or errors in reasoning so you can do this by studying types of logical fallacies the following are some of the most common errors in reasoning ad hominem so this happens when you attack the character of a person instead of his or her argument so basically it's just attacking the person for circular argument this happens when the idea of a stated argument is repeated so how to avoid that is do not repeat the argument instead prove it false analogy so this happens when two things which might be alike in some as which might be alike in some respects are compared and assumed to be similar in other ways so how to avoid false analogy first is to look at the characteristics features or components of two people or objects closely to see whether they can really be compared or not false authority this happens when a statement of someone who is not an expert in the field in question is being used in an argument so how to avoid false authority you need to check properly the qualifications of the person being cited so for false cause and effect this happens when the connection between two consecutive events is not clear 
how to avoid false cause and effect is to clarify the connections between events by explaining their backgrounds clearly. Hasty generalization. So this happens when a conclusion is drawn from insufficient evidence. How to avoid hasty generalization is provide enough pieces of evidence before making any conclusions. So red herring. This happens when the answer does not address the question. How to avoid red herring is do not avoid opposing arguments. Instead, address them properly. So, how to use emotional appeal? First is, you need to internalize what you are saying. So, the audience will be more convinced of your message if you also show convi conviction what you are saying. Second is, use emotion appropriately. Although, a uh, well-executive emotional appeal can be used as a strong weapon in persuasive speech. Take note to use it only with appropriate to the message. Okay? So, that's all. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Afia Francine Adam, the editor of Group 6, and that is our discussion for today, which was discussed by my group mates, and I hope you understand what a persuasive speech is and the qualities of persuasive, persuasive speech and uh, types of persuasive speech and its organizational patterns and methods and it oh, and methods and um, I would like to say thank you to my group mates which is Morales, Parcamento, Aguilar, and Co for being so cooperative and making this discussion successful and I would also like to say thank you to all of you who is watching this video for making it to the very end which is like gitiwas jun in yung video gipamina jun in yung discussion sa and so I'm very thankful for that because like you have appreciated appreciated our effort di man sagpasabot sa mga wala nakatiwa sa video wala nila na appreciate pero like I'm grateful na inyong gitiwas and um before I would end this discussion or video, um, I would like to say that it is okay to fail. Um, don't anah ayaw paguna na na if you fail once, dili na kamaka na if you fail once, dili na kamaka succeed or you will never or you will never be successful because failure is part of the hardships that you will need to encounter if you want to achieve your dreams or aspirations in life. So, it is okay to fail. It is part um, It is part of our lives. Like, we cannot avoid hardships, especially if we're not privileged to have like other people's life like Naila and na. They were born to have a privileged life which is really anana so it is okay to fail it doesn't make you less of a person it doesn't make you weak or even stupid as they say sa mga uban um failure is actually part of uh, it's actually part of success or it is actually part of being successful so so laban lang jadta sa Never give up because someday um achieve virgin nato at mga dreams. So never give up. Never um never let the negativity ruin you or ganang maguba sing future. Always think positively or always avoid um or ay olang jud padala ana mga negative comments or negative na mga na mga thoughts because someday you will reach your dreams and like mo ana juta na ay dinu o juta ay na I will be successful na so that is um that is all and if you want um if you want a copy sa among uh, PowerPoint presentation it is in the description box and if you have questions or clarifications you can um comment down below and I will respond or my groupmates will respond. So that is all and thank you. Bye-bye.